So, uh, new predators, huh? But which one should you choose? Well, that's actually a really good question because not only are there quite a few of them, but also the naming structure has changed. So we've said goodbye to the plus and the point ones and the point twos and point threes and instead have elites and pros and leagues. And well, there's also a club, but I haven't really gotten my hands on them yet. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the tech and the fit and feel in the elite boots and also compare how the pros and the leagues stack up against the more expensive elites. Because the thing is, these are really, really good football boots, but they're also 260, 270, and 280 euros. And if that's a little steep for you, well, these might be good options. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll find out which of these might be for you. Hopefully. But uh, let's do as we always do and start from the top with the three elite boots, which is now this shared name for all the three best boots in the Predator range. So you don't really have your plus boots anymore. Instead, you just have the elite FT, which would be the old plus, and then you have the elite laceless and I guess just the elite, which would take over from the point ones. But the funny thing is that the old plus boots here, the Elite FT, well, they have that iconic fold over tongue with the rubber strap, but that's the only thing setting them apart from the other two Elite boots. Because all three have the same HyperTouch 2.0 hopper, which is really, really soft. It's just a thin Wow, that's a difficult word. It's a synthetic upper that's super thin and really soft and just molds so well very quickly around your foot and is actually super comfortable out of the box. Now, on top of that, you have the strike skin, which are these little SL rubber fins that are almost these little sticky brushes that sit on top of the upper and add a lot of grip on the ball. Will they turn you into Jude Bellingham? Uh, uh, no, but they will offer something in terms of feeling like they will help you in manipulating the swerve and overall like trajectory on the ball when you strike it. You can just simply you feel like you're a bit more connected to it when you put your foot around it. But what is also unique to the elites is the way that they fit. See, Adidas have developed a new last, so the shape that the boot is built around, which means that you get uh, quite a snug fit in all of the elite boots. But with that said, while you do feel that the boot sits relatively close around your foot, because of the shape of the new last, you do feel that, at least I did, that it followed the natural curvature of my foot a lot better and just, it was just really smooth despite being so snug. And when you combine that with this really, really soft hyper touch upper, for me at least, it was just an instantaneously comfortable experience stepping into them. And as you break them in, it, it only gets better. Now, the outsole here is called Control Frame 2.0, which is the same on all three boots, despite this looking slightly more blingy. And it's a solid outsole. It's got a relatively stiff midfoot, good flex in the forefoot, and the studs work okay, especially on firm, natural pitches, because the studs are slightly long, meaning that I would be a bit hesitant on using these, or at least going hard on AG pitches. Now, of course, you shouldn't use FG boots on AG pitches anyway, which is also why Adidas have given us the AG variation of the Elite boot. But the thing is, you know, uh, cool. <laughs> but this is the same AG outsole that Adidas have been using for, I mean, years and years. And while it is dedicated to artificial grass and you keep a warranty and all that, they only bring in two more studs and they're roughly the same length and shape as on the FG boot. Meaning that for me, it's still a little bit too aggressive to be like a proper best-in-class AG outsole. Now, genuinely, I had thought that we'd be getting a new AG outsole for the elites. But let me stop myself real quick, because apparently we are. Because after recording this segment and frankly complaining a bit about this, I did find out that Adidas have indeed made a new AG outsole for the elite, which is called the Elite 2G 3G. So now there are uh, two. Elite AG outsoles, which is a little bit, a little bit confusing, but uh, <laughs> this thing has 37 studs instead of the 13 studs on the 4G AG outsole. And that's a really good thing because not only are there more studs, but they're also shorter. And that means that you have a more even pressure distribution on each stud, and you also have less aggressive rotational force going on to each stud. And all of that reduces the risk of injuries, you know, twisting your knees and joints and all that stuff. Plus, for me at least, it feels as if the traction here is a little bit more balanced and frankly, for me, better 
with these studs than in the 4G AG option. And that's really nice, but um, the tooling itself, the actual outsole for me is just not elite enough. It is uh, quite thick and chunky. It, it is significantly wider throughout the forefoot, the midfoot, and especially heel. And that affects the fit, that lovely fit in the Predator Elite. And also it is, in my size 40, around 70 grams heavier than the 4G AG option. And, and that's quite a lot. So while I really love the shape of the studs and the amount of studs, and I wish they would have just slapped it on the 4G version, I, it just doesn't really, you know, you really have to sacrifice a lot to get the studs. And that also means that unless I'm playing on a really short and hard and rough AG surface, I'm probably going to go for the 4G AG option. And given the fact that I still think there are too few studs and they're a little bit too long, and we'll probably not have this as my first pick for AG options compared to Puma and Mizuno and Nike and also New Balance, that leaves the Predator AG in a bit of like limbo, no man's land. But the key takeaway here should be that if you want something that's more performance focused, feels more like the FG option, the 4G AG option is what you should go for. If you want safety and durability, you should probably take a look at the 2G, 3G option, which is also great if you have really, really wide feet. But with that said, I think the Elites are really, really good football boots, and especially the, the Just Elite at 260 euros might be up there with my favorite Adidas boots in the many, many last years. Really good, and these are just, the vibes are there. And then there is the Predator Pro, which you would also know as the Old Point 2, which is actually a full 100 euros cheaper than the Elites at 160 euros. And you can tell. Now, to be fair to Adidas here, they have actually tried to get the pros as close to the elites as possible by still giving us a HyperTouch 2.0 upper and the Strikeskin SL rubber fins, which is really cool. I mean, at a full 100 euros less, you still get the same upper material-ish as the elites, and also you get that lovely stickiness on the ball from the Strikeskin fins. Now, the HyperTouch package here does feel different. The liner feels fuzzier and thinner, and it doesn't have that same easy, malleable feel as it does on the Elite, but it still feels very nice as an upper material, I would say. So, I mean, what's not to like? The easiest decision in the world, you basically get the Elite 400 euros less, right? Well, that's where the big difference comes. Because see, the fit in the Pro is quite different from that in the Elite. See, the Pro is built on a different glass compared to that on the Elite. You can almost see it on the side view here. They just look like very differently shaped football boots. And that also means that I felt that the Pros were wider in the forefoot and the midfoot, and then particularly wider in the heel, meaning that you won't get that same very snug, skin-tight fit as you get in the Elites, which to me was still very, very pleasant. And there will be some people who will like that slightly wider and also looser fit. Maybe also because you have more height and volume in the toe box. You can just, it's just, it's, it's a very, very different look. But, but for me at least, I'm lacking that very, very pleasant, very nimble feel of the Elites because they, they just feel more boxy and chunky on foot, to me at least. But then again, it's about foot shape and it might appeal to you. So now you know. Now the outsole here is called control plate. And to be fair, I mean, you can tell that it's a takedown plate. It's also the one used on the league, but it's probably one of the better outsoles I've seen on a pro slash point two price point from Adidas in a while. But the thing is, and this is what confused me when it came to the elites as well, that Adidas have also introduced a new AG, or actually it's called MG, multi-ground outsole on the pro, which, um, I mean, I like the idea, but the thing is that these studs, there aren't that many of them, and they're also quite long, meaning that I don't feel they would be that safe on AG specifically either. So, I mean, Adidas are maybe lacking a little bit behind the other brands in that regard, but if we go back to the FG model here, there are a lot of things to like on the pros. I mean, they come with a lot of bells and whistles, but for me at least, you can also tell that they have saved some money 
in building these. So again, if you have wider feet, bigger feet, maybe these are the ones for you, but still, I would be trending towards the elites. If you can spend the money, for me, these are infinitely better. I'm just saying. And then there is the Predator League, which would be the old point three, which comes in this low cut, then a high cut, and a high cut, a laceless variation, starting at 85 euros. So almost half the price of the point two. And it still has the same outsole, which is pretty cool. What it doesn't have though, is the HyperTouch 2.0 upper. This is called Hybrid Feel. Hybrid Touch, Hybrid Feel. <laughs> I mean, it's totally a dad joke, but I think it's uh, it's pretty funny. And also, what it doesn't have is the strike skin technology. Instead, it has strike scale, which are these little molded fins that are, they're not as tall as the strike skin. And obviously, they do add a little bit of like, I wouldn't call it grip, but there's a little bit of like roughness on the ball, but you don't, of course, get the same stickiness as you do in strike skin. But to compensate for that, added as instead equipped the entire upper with a little dotted micro texture to give again that sensation of having friction on the ball. And no, hybrid feel isn't hybrid touch either. You can tell. It does feel a bit more plasticky and synthetic-y, but to be fair, it's, it's relatively soft. And actually, once you break it in, it feels less cheap than I thought it would, which was a pleasant surprise, actually. But here's the thing, when you have a more expensive upper, such as HyperTouch 2.0, you get both a really soft, malleable material that is also quite structured, and in this case, also slightly stretchy, where you really feel it just molds around the shape of your foot, but also retains a good structural integrity. You just feel that there's quality in the material. And when the uppers become slightly cheaper, you either get that softness or the structure, often leading to a slightly stiffer upper. And given the fact that hybrid feel is relatively soft, it also means that you won't get the same structured, really locked in feel as you do in the pros and the elites. However, I would say that given the fact that the leagues use the same last as the pros do, meaning that it is a bit wider in the full foot, it has a bit more volume in the toes, they are really comfortable to wear. Again, they're not the same snugness and they don't feel as nimble, but I reckon that they are quite easy to put on. And actually, I also forgot to mention it for the pros here. For me, that really uh, almost like low edge on the medial side of the heel, that slightly looser feel there, means that it doesn't really feel all that responsive to me when I run around. And given how Adidas have made a more snug fitting heel, more tight fitting heel on the leagues, I would probably simply because of that, prefer the fit in the leagues to the pros. And these are almost half the price. And sure, the upper materials, they're not as nice. And you also have a lower, more pointed toe box than in the pros. So, uh, I mean, if you can live with the materials being slightly cheaper and more plasticky, this is not a bad option. I'll be honest. And while the Predator Leagues won't necessarily have all that much in common with the Predator Elites, I mean, the fit in the last is different. It doesn't have hybrid touch. It doesn't have strike skin. The outsoles are different. It weighs a ton more. But, you know, somehow, I like that Adidas have at least tried to make it taste and feel as much as the Elites as possible. And while the pros, on paper at least, are much more similar with hybrid touch and strike skin, I do actually think, given the lower, more pointed toe box and the shape of the heel on the leagues, that they do lean more towards the elites than the pro does. And I don't know if I would say I would prefer the, you know what, I think I would actually prefer the leagues to the pros because I simply think that they fit more like the elites. Obviously for me, there's no choice here. I would go for either the short tongue elite or with the fold over tongue. So if you have the money, go for these. Seriously, they're some of the most impressive boots on the market, but if you have to save some money, you still want a Predator takedown, I probably wouldn't judge you that hard if you went for the leagues over the pros. But that's that's just me. No matter which boot you decide to go for, you can of course get all of them in the link to New Sport right over there. But before you go and shop your brains out, tell me what you think of the lineup and which boot you would probably go for in the comment section right down below. Of course, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And of course, if you like learning new skills, hit the playlist in the bottom right corner there. With those words, I'll be signing off. Cheerio.